travelers' devotion to pilgrimage reaffirms the importance of religion to them. Like many other Catholics, travelers make the annual pilgrimage to climb Crowpatrick as a mark of respect and penance. 20-year-old traveler John Connors is from Coolock in Dublin. Okay, John, this is the beginning of it. How are you feeling? Feeling grand so far. Do you think you can do it? Yeah, I think I can do it. We'll see when we get up there, it'll get harder, won't it? The traditional pilgrimage to Crowpatrick stretches back over 5,000 years and is done in honor of St. Patrick. It was on the summit of the mountain that he fasted for 40 days in 441 AD. When we take the reek and climbs like this, do lots of travelers do it? Yeah, I hear a lot of travelers doing this one in particular as well. Um, this is my first time, probably me last. <laughs> We're supposed to be doing this barefoot. How the hell could you do this barefoot? I haven't a clue. I don't know how someone will make it. <laughs> I really don't, though. Tough going. Would you consider yourself religious? Not really. Not really, Henry, no. Not really religious. I'll say my prayers at night, but uh, that's about it. Mass once a year, maybe. Christmas time. You don't need to go to church to have faith in God, you know? Because if there's no, if you don't have faith, you just believe you're dead and you're gone, you're buried and there's nothing else. And that's a scary thought, isn't it? To have this great faith in the Almighty, it is, it is ingrained in them and has been passed down from generation to generation. Ah, that's beautiful. I feel a lot better now that I've seen that. Beautiful. In recent times, the Catholic Church has been mired by numerous scandals. The much publicized abuses by priests in Ireland and across the globe have tested the faith of many Mascos, including the traveler congregation. Attendance at Mass has dropped a lot, of course it has. I think some people have turned away the church and quite sadly a lot of the very negative stuff that has happened. But I think travelers in certain ways, know what it feels like for to paint everybody with one bush. And I don't think they're gonna do this. The Catholic Church and the scandals in recent times, do you think that's changing travelers' attitudes to going yeah. to mass, to church? Not at all, not at all, thank you. I think it's just uh, a few, is they're, they're all getting branded with the same the same reputation just because of a few making mistakes or whatever. It's more than making mistakes, it's being horrible monsters, but uh, I don't think that's changing travelers going to Mars and things, no, definitely not. One day went out and he took his life and there you go. Coming up, suicide and the devastating effect it's having on the traveler community. After quite a gruelling trek, John and I finally made it to the top of Crowpatrick. What was meant to be a test of faith turned out to be more a test of stamina. How are you feeling, man? You made it. Very you tired. made it. Very tired. You made it. I made it before you. How did you get up so quick? I felt a gust of wind coming behind me. It was like it was lifting me up. We got halfway. I thought we were nearly there. And then I looked up and seen this big mountain going up this way and having to crawl up. Oh, my God. The people, the people going down on the way down just keep spurring you on, ah, come on, you're nearly there, you're nearly there. It gives you a bit of confidence to keep going. Can you see why every year thousands of travellers make this trek? <laughs> no, not every year. I just a once in a lifetime opportunity for me and that's it. That's the last time I'm doing it. At the peak of the mountain, climbers are greeted by an oratory that was built in 1905 on the site of one of the oldest stone churches in Ireland, dating back to 890 AD. Do you feel close to God up here at the moment, on the top of Crowpatrick? Yeah, it is. It's a pretty holy place, and looking at the church, it's kind of an old church as well, and it gives you that kind of vibe, doesn't it? John's life is one that has been tainted by tragedy. His father committed suicide when he was only eight which has left him with quite an open and candid view on life. In your own family, there's been heartache, hasn't there? There's been tough times. Tell me about your father. He had problems and stuff with, he was mentally ill and, and uh, I think he had a few pressures in his own family. 
and basically but obviously couldn't take them and one day without them he took his life and there you go things happen you know and you were young when it happened so you moved on from it I was eight years old that's 12 years ago yeah moved on from it obviously Do you still yeah. feel sad about it? <laughs> not really sad obviously you're gonna miss some anybody belong to you uh, then especially your father so you know but I wouldn't uh, sit down and get all sad you know, it's, you have to like, move on, you know what I mean? You can't you say a prayer for him and like, things like that, but uh, you have to move on. John's story is not uncommon in traveller life. Suicide is a major problem within the traveller community, with many families being affected by it. Following a survey carried out in 2008, traveller suicide rates were judged to be five times higher than the rest of society.